Good afternoon. Let me just drop it down a bit. There we go. Um, welcome to my daily chat once again. This is episode number 550. Another little milestone. Um, today's topic is, are your standards too high? And before we jump in, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day for almost two years now, I've done these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is, in a way, part two from yesterday, and also because a friend of mine I'm having a conversation with keeps offering me these great, like, juicy things to start talking about. So that's what we're going to do today. So the topic today actually is like a two-parter in a way because it's really, um, well, again, episode 550, and the topic today is, are you standing too high? And this is really aimed at, because this is what started it, is these high-achieving women. Because so many women out there are running things, making things happen, so these high-achieving women, and well, Angel and Brent, I haven't seen you guys in ages. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, sorry, just a little distraction. By the way, this is Facebook Live. We're going to YouTube later on, so if you're watching it on YouTube, it was Facebook Live first, and I'll, I'll let you know the information about that at the back end. So, because in the conversation with my friend, she was saying about how being a high-achieving woman are her standards too high? So I'm just going to answer the question. First of all, say no, they're not. <laughs> okay, we're done. Sign off. See you later. No. <laughs> I'll give you more information. But the challenge is for a lot of women, who, particularly the high-achieving women, and men, men may have this too, but I'm speaking more to the women in this one particularly, um, because it seems to happen a lot for them, is that because, again, as I said yesterday, about how many women are really competing with men and being so lonely because they're so busy like competing, competing with men, not actually collaborating with men. That difference between competing and collaborating means they're more distant, more alone, more separate. And I talked about, the yes talked about that yesterday. Hang on. Let me take a breath and slow down and realize I'm running so fast. I've been amped up before I got to this talk, so let me start a bit more calmly. So, the... It looks to be that slowly, but... <laughs> um, the challenge for a lot of women, because of this... Um, I want to say rat race, but this racing energetic to get things done, to be achieving, to be successful, to be high end, is a. Um, it puts them in a position where they have to make everything perfect. A lot of women who are high, high achievers, in fact, have created a. I was going to say a portrayal, but it's maybe not the right word. But they've created an a, an appearance. That's a better word. They've created an appearance of everything being perfect. The way they dress, the way they look, the way their hair is done, the way their makeup is done, their, their manicures, their jewelry, the, the car they drive, their home, everything is immaculate. And the appearance is perfect. And yet the thing about it is, and this is going to sound blunt for a moment, but I'll get back to this in the point in a moment, is that just like everybody else, they still use the toilet, they still take a shower, they still have sickness, they still have issues, still have challenges, because we're human. And sometimes... Some of us, in certain scenarios, I'll include everybody on this one, we sometimes think we're superior or better than because of status or because of appearance or because of facade. And the reality is, we all put our clothes on, you know, one leg at a time sort of thing. I mean, that's going to sound weird, but you know what I mean. Um, we all have to, you know, unless we're on a, unless we're on a liquid-only diet, which some people do weirdly, we're all basically going to be taking a shit once in a while in, in you know in the toilet. So it doesn't make you superior. You know your shit don't it's not, nobody's nobody's shit don't stink as it were, unless you're spraying profuse amounts of perfume to cover it up. But see, this again is the thing, and I'll get to a really interesting point there. But that's the interesting thing as well is that it's cover up, and so for a lot of high achieving women and for men too, in a lot of ways, putting that appearance is a cover up for their own feelings of imperfection and insecurity. So. That appearance, that facade, that um, manicured presentation is really a trap both ways. Because on one side of it, for people on the outside looking in, they go, wow, that's so perfect, I, can't even, I wouldn't dare tread on the grass in front of the house sort of thing. So to enter in and to be interactive, there's almost like got to be a best behavior, you know, make sure my clothes on straight and everything's straightened up and perfect. On the inside, for the, in particular the woman who's the high achiever, being 
casual, being relaxed, being um, imperfect, which is the key word in this case, I guess, is almost impossible to actually enjoy because the fear of losing that that well-built hmm, house of cards, perhaps, but that well-built, well-built appearance has a huge price, which is you can't have, so that you can't take a breath, you can't relax, you can't make mistakes. There's a lot of high-achieving women. They've worked so hard because they've been very, in a lot of cases, so driven to achieve in a world that is dominated by men. The business world, I mean, in the, or the arena they're in, or the career path they're in. Been dominated by men, which means their ability to... Um, sorry, excuse me, not, not ability. Which means their um, operational method is continual, pushing, driving, achieving, and holding everything perfect. It's a lot of hard work, and a lot of women actually get very stressed out by this, and they end up having well, not so much breakdowns, but certainly physical illnesses and challenges because then they're, they're not able to take care of themselves because they're always working so hard to make it happen out there. So the challenge when it comes to a relationship is they don't let down any walls because they've got to be perfect. Because if somebody found out they weren't perfect, all that hard work, that ladder they climbed up, would be, just be wiped out, and they go back to the beginning. At least that's the false belief they carry. And this is where it gets to really bottom mind very simply. Is that if you're a woman who's in this position where you've been a high achiever, I think you know what I'm talking about here. That you're feeling that you're so, in some cases for some women, and this I've watched this a couple of times, have gotten so rigid in this place of achievement of having to keep things perfect, it's almost like you've locked up your muscles. The ability to dance and flow and create and be in a place of effortlessness isn't even available to you because you've been in a place of such constriction and containment to make them perfect. And this trap, first of all, is self-inflicted and secondly, doesn't serve you. So I'll get back to standards. Can I say that your standards are too high? Because this is what I'm speaking to is this piece of, um, I'm going to say this, 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 this practice that you've been in for so long that's become a right a, 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 a autopilot way of doing things has put you in a place where you haven't had the ability to understand what freedom is and ladies i say this very clearly your greatest gift is freedom so when you're away from that you're almost becoming atrophied in this place of limitation so again your standards aren't too high I'm actually changing the broadcast title because really this is about this this is this perfection drive that's going on what it is though is your standards are misplaced and this is the point it's not standards are too low they're misplaced what you've been using as your standards is based upon, based upon reflection of your own life where you worked to work so hard to get what you want to want to, to get the way you wanted to be and achieve what you wanted to achieve that you're afraid of a man entering that picture uh, becoming a, an invading force, so to speak, or to take away from that, or to knock it down, or to reduce your victory to nothing, something less, or to judge what you've done as not good enough. That happens too. Any of the above will put you in a place where your value of yourself will be diminished. I'm talking, the, I'm, I, what I'm speaking is actually coming like in small sentences, so I'm just watching what's coming ahead because I don't, I'm, I don't, I have a sense of where it's going. And what I'm getting the feeling of is what it's about is, is okay, your ladies, your standards that are so high is a simple defense mechanism because you don't trust yourself to be okay if somebody doesn't accept you for who you are. Whoa. Okay. So you can say that another way. And that was, that, that was clear for me. I think it was clear for you. That the standards are set so high because you're afraid that the you don't have the ability to withstand the slings and arrows of somebody else's judgment so the other way around as you become able to accept who you are value who you are for who you are regardless of anything else independent of your manicured perspective and presentation puts you in a place where somebody else's upset and judgment has no effect upon you at all when you get clear that you're not at the mercy of other people's opinions, which is a big part of this as well, by the way, then your standards become more manageable because your standards will move to what's true for you 
won't be so far out, out of reach. Because a lot of women out there have done this work in the business world, they've worked so hard to create this success that they don't trust any other person, man or woman, to honor them where they are. So if you keep the standards too high or high enough so they won't be available, you won't attract a relationship because that won't threaten your achievement. This is the this is the the nut in the middle of this, which is you've got to be willing to accept who you are, accept yourself, and accept your truth, so that what everybody what anybody else does isn't relevant to you. It doesn't impact you. It doesn't affect you. That was a deep one. Okay. Hmm. That was a bit deeper than I expected. Sorry, I'm just sitting with it. I'm just processing up myself about that. Just simple, that three-step process. Okay, so that will be... That's the That was the key piece of the process. I'm really, I'm really excuse me, I'm just reflecting on it. So that's the thing. So really getting clear that you have the power, ladies in particular, to stand in your truth, to honor yourself, and to not feel threatened by anybody else's opinion. So your choices in dating can come from a much more authentic place. Now, there's more work to do on the qualities you choose to put into your um, dating standards. So you don't make the dating standards so out of reach they're not possible, but you make them more aligned to your truth and they're heart-centered. That's where the shift has to be. And also at the same time, to really start getting clear about your value as you are, not by what you think you should be doing or what other people judge you by what you do or don't do. There's some homework for you. <laughs> Boy, I think that is going to be it. I think I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I had this this new energy of, of, of stuff come through the, like this yesterday and today because I had a conversation with a friend yesterday inspired these talks. So this one's another one to add to the add to the list. Um, ladies, if you're watching this, and you want some help, particularly in what I talked about. I am offering up a um, it's a it's a feminine leadership cons consultation. I just put this I put it together recently. And I'm I'll invite you to sign up for that as a free gift from me to you. Um, I'll put the link in the comments. And it will get you started. Again, I'm going to offer my free love, free love, my self-love um, meditation practice because that will definitely assist you with that internal dialogue and the internal evaluation that will give you freedom to be yourself as you are, independent of circumstance. So that will be in the comments as well, a link for that. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back and review what I said because that was pretty potent. Um, I hope it was helpful to you too. This is my daily daily talk, by the way, on Facebook Live that goes out every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And then it goes on to my YouTube channel after that. And then there's my podcast. I'll give you the links. And if you're, watch, you're just joining the broadcast, please watch from the beginning. I dropped, I dropped some deep truth about four minutes ago, which I don't remember what it said. So I'll take it back and watch the replay. Thank God this has been recorded. <laughs> but it's a powerful shift for you ladies who are, who are high achievers that have challenges with your standards in a relationship. So watch it from the beginning, please. And I'm gonna make sure I let people know to do that. So again, Facebook Live on um, my, at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day that goes onto my business page after I finish, which is Barry Selby the author. And then goes onto my YouTube channel. And on YouTube, it's Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. And you can watch them there. And then there's a playlist called Messages to the Masculine where all of my broadcasts are collected. And you can watch them from newest to oldest if you get really wanting to get um, binge watch. And thirdly, on my podcast, which I'm building out slowly, is Messages for the Masculine on iTunes. You can subscribe to that as well, and you can download the audios and listen to them when you're driving, moving around, whatever you're doing. This is key information for ladies, especially when you're high achievers, that may give you a different perspective on how you can date effectively, successfully, and supportive of where you are and where you want to go. There's more coming. This is only, this is only the second one of these, this new series. Um, so watch yesterday's as well and today's and tomorrow's may be the same thing again I'll be back in tomorrow at 5pm pacific time to inspire, provoke and uh, awaken and uh, I th we'll see if it's part 3 I'm not sure, I'm just, just debriefing what's coming through me but I appreciate you being here and uh, again I'll put the links in the comments take care of yourself you deserve the best but make the standards amenable to who you are and with that I, wish you, I thank you for watching I'll see you again tomorrow, take care